And today I'm going to detail how the antioxidant sleep hormone melatonin supports the health and function of our eyes and why sustained, consistent exposure to darkness is just as critical as light. The synthesis and release of melatonin from the pineal gland is heavily influenced by first light stimulation of the ocular retina and then later direct and sustained exposure to darkness which is when pineal gland melatonin can then diffuse into the eyes via the ocular capillaries. Melatonin receptors are found throughout the ocular tissue including the cornea, lens, ciliary muscles and retina. But melatonin is also synthesized in the eye itself, where it contributes to several physiological processes, including phototransduction, which is how photoreceptors in the eye convert exterior light into an electrical signal, thus initiating the process of vision. Ocular melatonin also supports the continual renewal of the retinal photoreceptor cells that give us our color and night vision. And, as a potent antioxidant, Melatonin also reduces oxidative stress on the ocular lens and also epithelial cells in the retina. And this action alone can protect against age-related macular degeneration. Melatonin also balances intraocular pressure, which is the fluid pressure in the eyes. And this is especially critical because consistently elevated or otherwise excessive intraocular pressure can lead to glaucoma a progressive optic neuropathy characterized by damage to the optic nerve and the retinal ganglion cells that synchronize daily circadian rhythm to the light-dark cycle. And this damage can then impair the function of existing melatonin, leading to the sleep disorders that people with glaucoma often have. Intraocular pressure is ordinarily the lowest at nighttime, and this is also when melatonin levels are normally the highest, so in other words, the more abundant the melatonin, the lower the intraocular pressure. Direct sunlight is the most prominent source of blue light, which then stimulates the suprachiasmatic nucleus, or SCN, in the hypothalamus. And the SCN is essentially a pacemaker that maintains our circadian rhythm. So this is where you can really see the necessary interplay of both light and darkness, because while the blue light stimulated SCN is responsible for the peak of darkness-induced melatonin secretion, something that literally conveys the message of darkness to the internal circadian clock, less than optimal direct sunlight results in decreased production of melatonin at night and, of course, a lack of sleep. Artificial blue light, which we get abundantly from fluorescent lights, LED TV screens, computer monitors, smartphones, and tablets, greatly disrupts biological rhythms, particularly at nighttime. Blue light, either natural or artificial, is also the most potent activator for melanopsin, a retina receptor that suppresses melatonin. By contrast, melatonin levels rise sharply in response to dim light. So for those of you who do lots of screen time at night, wearing some blue blocker glasses, which also mimic a dim light atmosphere, can really help. So even if you habitually take supplemental melatonin just before bed, you should now understand just how important daily exposure to both direct sunlight and then later darkness really is for both producing natural melatonin and also optimizing its release. Shut off the blue light and embrace the dark. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.